had to pay a bribe to the police and he says, you know, we don't get paid from the government, so you understand, we have to get paid. That's yeah. gambling, that's where they make the money. Right. They love gambling. I lived in America for, for I lived in America in 1994. I got sent back, deported, you know, whatever stuff. Deported? Was, yeah. What was that for? So you never know wherever shooting might just happen on any day. She would be selling a good by the wood. They would be shooting and then the bullets will fall all upon her her belongings. Those would be grenades. So the police threw Two grenades, grenades into this building. Oh yes. What still met him on correct this our fair outande? Merci. Those people in the uh, the ghetto, they can't afford those guns. They can't even afford to eat. And how would they be able to buy those guns and ammunition? Well, you're saying the guns are being handed to them by... By the politicians. And electricity? Is it the locals who have put cables into the main line or how does it work? Yeah, that's what they do. Right. I mean, if you look at this... Okay. So it's for free? <laughs> it is for free. <laughs> this is how they collect this guys. This guy. They're going to fill up those massive tanks? Yep. Wow. The gas stations are selling the gas in the black market. At the port, the uh, gang has control of the yes. importation of, exactly. of fuel. He placed a GPS in one of those garbage uh, uh, piles. He actually find the GPS on another garbage pile. They take the garbage away, but then they'll put it in another suburb. Exactly. The level of corruption. Every single stage. Every single stage, is a, the level of corruption is there. And so at the very end, there's nothing left. No. What needs to happen in Haiti for this to be turned around in a positive way? All I can say, I'll leave it in God's hand, but... That it... seems to be many people's answer. Do, so, <laughs> so do, you, do you think that many people think that it's like got to a point of no return? Haiti, the poorest country in all of the Americas, a country that has faced constant struggle from earthquakes, 7.3 magnitude earthquake, 220,000 people killed, to gang wars. Gang war rages on in the capital city of Port-au-Prince. Kidnappings and killings getting even worse throughout the country. Armed violence has reached unimaginable and intolerable levels. Countless kidnappings. The country's most powerful gangs is believed to be behind the kidnapping of 17 missionaries. This has become daily life. Tires burning on on city streets, protesters furious at the government's inability to confront kidnappers. Corruption. And untold poverty. These are amongst the poorest people in the world. With an average salary of less than $3.50 a day. The situation has become so desperate that there is currently a mass exodus from the country. 200 migrants stopped at sea. Deep in the jungle in Panama, parents clinging to their children, bracing for the hundreds of miles ahead. More than a dozen Haitian migrants are dead after the boat they were on capsized. Millions of people fleeing, risking their lives for the chance of a better one. So what is this notoriously dangerous? country like on the ground. Well, I guess we'll just have to jump on a plane if we want the answer to that one. Gunshots and terror echoing in the streets of Haiti. What is this place? This is actually a war zone. There's guys with guns everywhere. These are some of the roughest streets I've ever seen. And they said they're going to arrest you. Well, I guess I'm going to a Haitian prison right now. Shame, shame. This country is so extreme. The assassination of President Trump. The furthest I've ever been pushed on any of my trips. So basically now we have to just get out of here because we don't want to be caught in crossfire. The bus will protect from stray bullets, is that right? Yeah. No, it's not free at all. We saw a kidnapping. So we have to wait behind this wall until the shooting yeah, stops. We'll kill by the gun, we'll die by the gun. So welcome to Santo Domingo, capital city of Dominican Republic here at the airport. About to jump on a plane to Haiti. It's about six in the morning. Early start today. I'm heading to Port-au-Prince, the capital of Haiti, a country and a city which has a notorious reputation. United Nations just labeled it the most dangerous place in the world for whatever that's worth. Haiti is a country I've wanted to visit for a very long time. Since I visited Venezuela back in 2019, I actually heard of a guy who went to Venezuela, which if you know much about Venezuela, it's not the safest place. And he went 
went to Haiti after spending a couple weeks in Venezuela. Even in comparison to Venezuela, Haiti was far too dangerous for him and he cut his trip short after four days and got a flight out of there. So I am nervous, of course, but I'm just really interested to see what life on the ground is like for the Haitian people. Obviously, it's a beautiful landscape, but mixed in with untold suffering for, for centuries. So let's go and see what Haiti has to offer. Gracias. Okay, so arrived in Port-au-Prince, driving through the streets now, five minutes or so, arriving and the, the cops pulled us off and we had to bribe them. This is, uh, here we are with Sean. Sean's gonna be looking after me in Haiti. He's gonna be trying to keep me alive, right? Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We'd basically left the airport maybe a kilometer or so and then the police pulled you aside. They had machine guns and obviously armor and everything and they wanted something from you. Oh yeah, he took my license and then took my car paper and just stick it in his pocket and keep walking around with it. And I had to go and meet him and say, what's up? Are you gonna give me a ticket or not? He said, nah, you know how it works. <laughs> and I said, okay. Then I went. I give him something, and he gave me back my license and my car paper. First of all, big police presence here. Machine guns and armor and everything. Obviously, there's a, a gang and police war going on at the moment in this country and has been for some time they're very cautious they're checking cars we got pulled up had to pay a bribe to the police and he says you know we don't get paid from the government so you understand we have to get paid that was my introduction to haiti you can see behind me the neighborhood on the hillside we're about to venture in there We've met up with some locals in there. It is gang territory, so we are in touch with the gangs. What better way to start day one in Haiti? by going straight into there, so let's go. Right here we are in the area of Jalousie. And how is safety and things here? This is gang territory? Or? Uh, yes, uh, partly there are some gang activities inside of this area. Gang activities is not the same as downtown area or city Soleil. Which are places we're going to go to uh, later in the trip, yes, exactly. right? exactly. Even I, yeah. as a guide, I would have to find a guide inside of this yeah. area. So you say it's not safe here? It's not quite safe. Right. But it's safer than the other areas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, it's Haiti safe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right. I see. Okay. We're capable. We're She cut her stroke and she can't even move and go. Had a stroke. Yeah. yeah. She had a hypertension. She felt that her body was catching some kind of crack and uh, right away she didn't feel good at all and right away she uh, called her husband and then she called That's one it. of her older uh, daughter and by the time they arrive here and she already cut the stroke. Where I come from on the news for Haiti it's painted like this place with never-ending problems. Would you say that's true for your experience living here? Yeah, it's a huge problem. She's a merchant and used to go downtown to sell her goods but now she can't even go because of all of that shooting that is constantly happening. So you never know wherever shooting might just happen on any day? She would be selling a good by the wood. They would be shooting and then the bullets will fall all upon her, her belongings. Right, so not only it would be really scary, but yeah. it would ruin her product. Yeah, and then what happened is that she left downtown and she left all her belongings downtown. She ran away from the shootings that was happening. All her belongings were stolen and now she doesn't have anything. One last question. What do you think needs to happen for Haiti to be in a better place than it is now? Only God himself can save this country because we don't have a government and we don't have any institution that are actually working at this moment. Hey! <laughs> See, that's, that's your chef. Oh, okay. Okay? okay. Right. <laughs>
He's the chef at my uh, hotel that I'm staying. I love the uh, community vibes. As you can see, if you come here, you will see the crack. You see? Uh -huh. You see all that crack? That's from the earthquake. All here. As you can see, this is all the crack from uh, uh, 2010, and what happened, the owner tried to fix it. So do you have lots of problems with houses just sometimes collapsing randomly because of the pre-structural damage from when the earthquake After happened? After the earthquake, yes, some houses did collapse. Yeah. But those houses, as you can see, what you will call, if you come here, this is what we call bedrock. You see? Those houses are built in bedrock. Uh -huh. So if the earth, even if the earthquake happened, the rocks would actually move oh, with the house. Right. <laughs> so it doesn't damage the house as quick as a house that would build in um, flat land uh -huh. or what you would call claim lands. We claim lands. Right. Yeah. So, so those houses, many of them were cracked, but they did not actually collapse. So it's like natural earthquake proof. Yes. Okay. Got it, you. Oh, we got an audience. <laughs> <laughs> You were telling me something interesting before about the garbage here in Haiti and how the government move it but they don't get rid of it. I have a friend that used to be in the army and he placed a GPS in one of those garbage uh, uh, piles and he actually find the GPS on another garbage pile. So they remove the garbage and dump it upon another garbage in another area. They take the garbage away, but then they'll put it in another suburb. Exactly. They don't pay them on time. So they get discouraged on doing the job that they should be doing. We will always have this problem of pile of trash everywhere in the metropolitan area. And how does sewage work here? Well, more people, what happened in this area they will build their own, uh, they will dig a hole, let's just say it's about uh, 30 feet to 35 feet deep, and that's where they will dump all the waste. This slum area, the government have no control over what is happening inside of this area. Is that because there's no building permit or because of the gangs? Actually, there is building permits, but they don't follow with it. Uh -huh. When those people are building that house, the government doesn't even show. It. Right. Yeah and to uh, tell them this is how the way you should build it and you should leave space or even wood for cars you don't even see that in here right you know it's all little corridors that you have to go through and the buildings are not well built and the electricity is it the locals who have put cables into the main line or how does it work yeah that's what they do right i mean if you look at this okay all those little lines that you see here that's people that are attached to the main uh, uh, it's usually the cable. Uh -huh. So it's for free? <laughs> it is for free. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like a roulette vending machine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. What do you take I should do? Six. <laughs> Did they make this? Uh. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> we gonna try again? Yeah, yeah, if you want. Oh! Did they make this themselves? Or? Yes, give us a. Ah, no, for what la? They make the box. How many people a day play this? A lot. Heaps. Yeah, that's yeah. gambling. That's why they make the money. Right. They love gambling. Meji? Oui. Ah, no, we me back at Nothing. We could only go so far into that neighborhood yes. there because the guys that you have the contact with uh, are only in touch with the, the, I guess, the gangs that run a certain area. And yeah. if, if we crossed, like I guess an invisible border, yeah. we would be in somebody else's territory and it could get... Yeah, exactly. Dangerous. That's how it works in a big slum area like that. Mm. So you will have different, uh, what you call, chief that control different areas.
This uh, building behind us has obviously got some damage, some bullet holes, and it looks like it's been on fire. And uh, last year, your president was assassinated, right? Yes, exactly. And Police in Haiti say two Haitian Americans and more than 20 Colombians are behind the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse. Moïse was shot dead during a raid at his home on Wednesday. The country in utter turmoil. The Haitian government requesting American troops to help keep the peace. Government officials here declaring a state of siege. They urge people to stay in their homes and to remain calm. This has some kind of connection to that, you okay. were saying? Right after when uh, our president was assassinated, he lives not too far away from here. Then the mercenaries were trying to escape. They came down this road. And then since the police blocked that area, because that's the only way that they could go through, so they came and hide in that house. They came and hide in that house, and then the police find out. So they're starting to uh, shooting at them. Right. And then those would be grenades. So the police threw, threw grenades, grenades into this building? Oh, yes. Many of them were arrested. I think two or three of them were got killed. You said many of the other ones ran to the neighborhood that we were just in. Yes, exactly. So the people from that neighborhood that we were just in, you know, some of the gang members, they were strong enough to capture Colombian mercenaries, keep them alive and oh, take, yes. take their weapons off them and hand them into the police. Yeah, I was quite surprised that those people could have killed those uh, 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 Colombians, yeah. but they didn't. They rather than turn them to the police along with all their guns. Okay, so we've come to a petrol station and in Haiti is a huge issue with petrol. You see behind me, these people are lined up. There's huge queues down the road. Uh, can you just explain a little bit about what's going on in Haiti with the, the fuel shortage and, and the black market and everything? It was causing by uh, the gang members. Uh, the guys could not make it woods to this area. But now, uh, the police was able to secure this area and allow the guys to reach the gas stations. So the gangs but were blocking the fuel? Were blocking the fuel on routes. But now we are able to receive it. But still, the gas stations are making, they're selling the gas in the black market. Okay. Let's say they sell a part of the gas and then store the rest and sell it by midnight and two o'clock in the morning. Okay. Who's, who's awake around this time? No right. one. So around this time, they would, uh, they know exactly who to sell it with, uh -huh. and you will find it in the black market. Right. I find my guys in the black market. Uh -huh. I couldn't even find it here. Right. But two, uh, three times or four times even more expensive than the actual price. And, so and this is basically what is happening. Uh -huh. It's a problem that the government should address uh -huh. in some kind of way, and I don't know how they were going to be able to do it. Uh, we don't actually have a government right now, we have an interim government, uh -huh. which is run by uh, Ariel Henry, a prime minister. And that was since the president since was the president assassinated? Since president died a year ago. Okay. So he's still in power and don't know how long that would be. We have pro gangs problems, we have fuel problems, educational problems. We, we don't know if school will be open in a few weeks, food security, all uh -huh. that. Is, it's, a, it's a huge problem in the right. country. So I believe it's just, this guy just mentioned, Haiti is a fair state right now. And we need the international support. You should film that. I mean, that's what they, this is how they collect these guys. So there is no guys here. So what's happening? They're waiting so they can fill these up. See, this is exactly what's happening. So those will first to uh, be filled. So they're waiting. So they can start putting it on there. At two o'clock, it should be open. And is there a limit per person? Or is it just whatever who can take whatever? Not really. If you can bribe the, okay. the guy working at the gas station, so you every can fill it all. Every single level is corruption. The level of corruption. Every single stage. Every single stage, is a, the level of corruption is there. And so at the very end, there's nothing left? No. Right. Now you're going to have to raise the price of uh, transportation. Mm -hmm. That will also raise the price of food products. Right. And so inflation must be absolutely rampant. So high. Long line of cars reaching all the way down there to here. And uh, they, those people, they can't even find gas. And they're looking for gas and they want to work. He's been trying for those 22 days, trying to find gas and he's unable to find gas. 
and so he's just camping out by the petrol pump to hopefully some shows up. He's been here since five o'clock in the morning, five a.m. Just sitting here waiting. Just sitting for here. They open and they close it. They open and they close it. Walking along the line here. We even have the government car. That's a government car. Yeah, service data. Right. Waiting for gas as well. What happened? They tapped on gas too? The charges. <laughs> They're going to fill up those massive tanks? Yep. Wow. So even the government can't get access to petrol? I see one government car. Yeah. Right on the line. Yeah. And I asked him, even the government car is on the line as well? He said, well, you see what's happening. That's what he said? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is insane. This is totally crazy. Yeah. I mean, the government cars cannot have gas. Yeah. And you're saying at the at the ports, there's uh, like a uh, gang has control of the yes. importation of, exactly. of fuel? And that's why you, that's, that was one of the main problem because yeah. they could not get to the gas station uh -huh. with the gas because it is being blocked by some gangs. The American is used, but it's the American who is in all that stuff. He said he want to be sorry to put it yeah. that way, but it's the U.S. government who put Haiti in the position that it is today. It's not the story of the development of Haiti. The U.S. government and France and Canada that actually put Haiti in the situation that it is today said that Haiti helped the U.S fought for independence. A blood was thrown for the sake of the independence of the U.S., for their liberty. And now this is what they return to us, so they don't respect our values. So God will punish them for what they're doing to Haiti. And can you just outline the biggest problems in Haiti right now? What are the problems that we have to in Haiti? The biggest problem is education, insecurity, the Education and security and the fall of states. The Haitian states, the Haitian government is completely failed and collapsed in their duties. He believed the reasons of all of that, that's what caused a lot of migrants are leaving the country huh? by boats and leaving and fleeing this country. Some of them have been waiting here, like you heard, since five in the morning, and a lot of them are just buying it to resell it. So they buy it for a cheaper price, cheaper even though it's inflated, and then they'll uh, sell it for more. So it's just chaos. Okay, so we've met a, a local man called uh, Richard. You mentioned you you moved here ten years ago from America, mm -hmm. and but you were born in Haiti originally. Yeah, I was born here. Yeah, and you moved to America at what age? I lived in America for, for I lived in America in 1994. I lived there. Okay. You know why I got sent back, deported, you know, whatever. Stuff deported? Was, yeah. What was that for? Uh, fighting. Assault, fighting? Yeah. Uh -huh. Assault the case, somebody got, you know, got hurt. Right. So, and in, in what part of America was that? New York. New York City? Yes, New York City. Oh, okay. Five boroughs. Wow, wow, wow. And so you've obviously lived in America and you've lived in Haiti, so you've been able to compare. Mm -hmm. You said that, that Haiti was good when you first came back, but when not I, not now, right? When I first came out here, you know, things was, uh, you know, easy mm -hmm. I, ain't gonna say, I ain't gonna say it was the best but it was easy but now do what's going on president laws can't have a proper election you got school you got food the food is like the most you must think you got to be rich to eat a good food a good meal out here right and if you go next door dominican republic food is cheap you know uh -huh. so every, everybody's suffering now we got the biggest situation right now is just gas situation so that's tend to get ugly it's gonna get ugly right and that affects everything yeah right? it affects everything uh -huh. because you know to get somewhere to go to school you got to take a transportation yeah to get to school on time if if i can't get to the gas station because the streets is blocked i can't get to the i can't get to i can't get on the road the streets is blocked due to the gas station cars piled up yeah. how my kid is going to get to school now what needs to happen in haiti for this to be turned around in a positive way Man, all I could say, I'll leave it in God's hand, but... That it, seems to be many people's answer. Do, so, <laughs> so do, you, do you think that many people think that it's like got to a point of no return? For me, for me personally, it's, opinion, it's my opinion, I think it's no return. You think that... So we're, so we're, a savior got somebody's gonna come from somewhere, gonna save you know, a dark night or a superman's gonna come and <laughs> deliver us. Right. Where do you see the future? You think it's gonna get a lot worse? 
Well, by the way things is going, I don't see it getting better right now. There's no promise. There's not even a false hope. Really? Of getting better. Right. <laughs> More or less the reality of getting better, you know. Is the people got to put their head together and, you know, that's something that's very difficult out here for people to put their head together. But. And so for somebody like me, obviously, I'm very privileged. Uh -huh. You know, I, I, I have access to fuel and petrol at home and everything and I don't have to worry, but so it's hard for me to understand how do you keep going every day, day in, day out? Like, what goes through your mind every morning when you have to go out and earn well, money? When you gotta earn money, man. Um, okay, it's like two different lifestyles out here. You can do the, how can I say it? The gangster life, you know, negative thoughts, you know, robbing people. Or you can do what people do out here. I would say begging. Mm -hmm. Or you ask, you see somebody that you know, you ask them, yo, um, I would like to go, you know, let me help you out. Right. Or I see somebody I see every day, like the business owner, I see you every day. Yo, can I hold 500 out? Can I hold 500 out? Okay. So it's just like little bits of work here and there. Yeah. Okay. You know, odd jobs. Wow. You know, that's how it works out here. Uh huh. Or some guy will go, I don't know, a construction site might be breaking down, or it might be some material you could take and go trans convert into cash. You know? Right. Those type of hustles, you know. So Rich has just mentioned that he has two kids, so he has to, uh, you know, spend multiple days out here and feeding to, to earn money on the streets to feed his family. So he's showing us where he lives, where he sleeps. Respect. Nice. You got guys in here watching TV. How many guys living in here? Well, it works like this. If you have a situation that, let me see, you're trying to pay rent or you can't get nowhere to live, your yeah. family's one spot, you come here for an embassy, like, okay, I can lay here for a little minute. Uh-huh. And I can scrap up some money. So it's like a I, refuge. Like, pretty much. Uh-huh. Cause we not we don't accept nobody who's stealing. Uh-huh. In the streets, in the community, come here, come hang out with us. Cause all the cops out here know us. So if we have something missing, they'll come here looking for it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, we smoke our little weed out here, but yeah, that's right. about it. That's the limit, right. but as far as like putting ourselves in danger for cops to come here, come searching us, come beating us up and stuff like that. Nah, we're not going. They don't do that. Because if something happened out here, we the first one they call like, yo, why y'all let this happen? Uh, so you're looked at as kind of like the peacekeepers of the community? Basically. Right. Like, we out here because most of we grew up, most of these guys grew up out here right. since kids. Right. In the same yard. Ma fait rap pour tout un guetan. Ma fait rap pour simulat. Ma fait même pour blanc. Ça pas d'accord à négro. Ma pouvo me tu black. Ma pouvo me tu rap. Ça m'a fait à ma fait net. Yo, m'pas qu'on ni un pet ni un petit. C'est Dutch qui montre mon mon son journaliste qui a produit. M'pas qu'on ça va faire. Wap style mette encore avec des ça va faire. Où t'en dé? Merci. Is that freestyle? He gave a freestyle, but yeah, watch the situation right here. Yeah, yeah, because well, he said something like journalist. So what yeah, was you he... got the journalist here. I don't know what you're doing, but whatever you're doing, you're gonna be, it's gonna be positive. Bonjour. Bonjour. Nous va nous faire nous passer visé. Petit, nous va à l'école. In order to live in Haiti, you got to be part of correction, um, corruption. The reason why we suffering because we don't want to be part of um, corruption. Our kids got to go to school so and though. things is hard. Let me out tell here. you. Wow, that's nice. <laughs> he knows he was in jail. So we've driven up to this absolutely insane viewpoint here. Incredible to be invited in like that by Richard and his friends. At the end, Sean bought them all food, and they were so grateful. Obviously. They're in a very difficult situation. Just to see that sense of community there and that the police kind of, you know, rely on them to, you know, keep a bit of stability to that area was quite touching. Here's Port-au-Prince, yeah. A lot of hardship happens here. But at the same time, it's absolutely breathtaking scenery. And we've come to this rooftop cafe here, restaurant and bar and it's incredible. But most people, are they using cash? It's cash. Yeah. So just over there, the so-called most dangerous neighborhood in the world, and that's where we're going in the next video. It's called Sit de Soleil, Sun City. That's going to be something. But up here, it's really beautiful. 
got the banana trees, avocado trees. I think there's even yam plants. Absolutely stunning. Imagine just walking out of your house in the morning and grabbing an avocado off a tree. Over here is the downtown area. I think that's like one of the most dangerous places in the country as well. It's all gang disputed and that's where the lady that we met today, she used to go and sell her up goods but now she won't even dare to go down there because of getting caught in the crossfire of turf wars. So Sean, you have a very interesting story about almost being shot in the head. We were working research and investigation concerning gun distributions and drugs in Haiti and we having the interview with the gang member. But there was a rival gang that comes to attack him. And then we stopped the interview promptly. He got up and we got up. Ons I stepped out, trying to get away from his home. A bullet went right around my head. Ah. And it hit the wall that was right there. Then we run back in. And then he come out and start shooting at them and make a clear passage so we could get through. I believe that's when I almost got killed. You still go back into these kinds of places? Oh, yes, I was there just recently with uh, another guy. And and what makes you like just okay with that? Because most people, if they almost get shot in the face, they'll probably say that's enough for you. It's journalism. I love my job. Right. <laughs> what do you love about it? I like talking to people. I love meeting new people and I love finding new content. I love making sure that people see the truth, the reality of what is happening around those area. Not many media in Haiti are going to those area. Not because they don't have access, but that they are afraid of their own life. I mean, how is this news going to reach the people here and other people around the world will know what's exactly the reality of life in the ghetto in Haiti? I go by these words. That's why I'm not afraid at all by the bullets. It always says, who kill by the gun will die by the gun. So I haven't killed. <laughs> So Sean, something that is widely covered in the news in Haiti is uh, kidnappings, right? Yes. I remember back in the days when there would be political problem, political turmoil in Haiti, and you all have the government that would try their very best to find a solution. And also, you will find the oligarchs, perhaps with one voice, they could try to find a way and uh, persuade the government and even the international community to do something. But the oligarchs keep their mouth shut and none of them never get kidnapped. They keep their mouth shut and nothing is happening. The only type of people that are being kidnapped are mostly the people in the middle class, which is now they force them to leave their own country and go to the neighborhood country, Dominican Republic. If it was not an organized crime, why they never go after those oligarchs who is bringing guns and ammunition into this country? So it's very targeted to the middle class. Exactly. Uh -huh. They're trying to dismantle totally the middle class. You were mentioning that people that get kidnapped have to sell their... Their uh, lands. Their homes too. They have to sell whatever the possession that they possess. Uh, their lands, their cars, their housing. And who's buying it from them? Not the middle class. It's the oligarch. The bank. When all those money coming from? From the bank. Where do you think this all money? I mean, they're asking $10,000, a million dollars. Where is that money going? Do you think it goes to the ghetto? They said no. Never with a person from the ghetto will um, kidnap a person and they will have ten thousand dollars or even a million dollars to go to the ghetto that would raise a big war between them so the money doesn't even go to the ghetto so most people would think that 
kidnappers or the people organizing the kidnapping are coming from the really desperate parts of the country, but what you're saying is it comes from the 1%. Of course. Those oligarchs who own anything, who own the banks. Those people in the, uh, the ghetto, they can't afford those guns. They can't even afford to eat. And how would they be able to buy those guns and ammunition? I saw somewhere that somebody couldn't uh, afford a bowl of soup, but they were sitting there with like a $5,000 gun. Well, you're saying the guns are being handed to them by... By the politicians, by the oligarchs. Respect for you. I'm okay, how are you doing? You look good. A police, a police, uh, what do you call it? Informant. Oh, really? Nah, I'm just speaking. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? Yeah, man. So, oh, man. Yeah. All right. He's a good mechanic. <laughs> mechanic? Yeah. Okay. He works for the police. Really. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what a day. Haiti. That was quite the uh, introduction, you know, having to uh, bribe a heavily armed police officer. It's literally 1k from leaving the exit to the airport. But you can see Sean is the man to, to have by your side in this country. He seemed to know people everywhere. Definitely the guy in such an unpredictable country. I mean, we're still driving around with the doors locked and things, obviously. Should come as no surprise. But yeah, Haiti definitely delivering. I mean, to meet the people firsthand and, you know, that experience we had with Richard and uh, his mates down at that little kind of compound area. Something quite special to, you could really feel that camaraderie between those guys. In the next video, we're going to the most dangerous neighborhood in the world, apparently, according to the UN. Very recently, there were 470 people killed, disappeared, or seriously injured. Many, many houses burnt down. Apparently, lots of people have just fled from the area completely, but some still remain. It's right on the coast there. Houses made out of just corrugated iron, tin. Been told by Sean, it's very likely that we're gonna hear gunfire. I better get a good sleep, and I'll see you in the next video for that one. Happy to be here in Haiti. Been a long time coming, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.